Hey everyone, welcome back to Life on the Wrist. Welcome back to the channel. As promised, we're going to be diving into one of the pieces that we uh, went over in our last video. Today we're going to be going over a really beautiful Gigi um, Le Coultre time-only piece from 1961 with a beautiful inscription on the back that really resembles um, quality in movement design and finishing as well as quality in case, which are two components that are extremely important to vintage watch collectors. So without further ado, let's jump into it. The JLC that we're going to be looking at today is really um, a great example for two main reasons. The first has to do with the condition of this watch, which I think is overall extremely great. Um, and the second has to do with the movement that is used. I have always been a huge fan of the quality of movement and case design that um, JLC, um, JLC strives to, to be at. Um, many people know that they were suppliers of movements to many of the big brands. And um, so I think this is a perfect example of a watch that, um, that demonstrates those abilities. So. The watch that I have in my hands here, as you can see, once I get the focus in here, is a really beautiful um, Jäger Le Coultre time only uh, piece in stainless steel um, from 1961. Now, if you cast your mind back to 19, 1961, you can probably think of um, things that were going on during that time, but really, why I think this piece is such an extraordinary example has to do with the case. So as you can probably see with the the footage that I've got here, once I've got this sort of focused up again, um, is the overall condition of this piece. The stainless steel case feels as if it is in untouched condition. Um, and I'll give some more sort, sort of images of this watch um, in, a, in a second. Um, but yeah, so um, the watch dates 1961 and is in really great condition at first thing the steel piece of that era. Um, the watch measures 33 mil millimeters in diameter and has a 18 millimeter lug width. So you're looking at something a little bit small. If you compare it to this watch that you see right next to it, this is an Omega reference 2279, which is a 35 millimeter case with an 18 millimeter lug width. So a little bit um, of a different size uh, compared to that. So I'll give you some images of the cases so I sort of talk through this specific piece. So once the camera focuses on the case, so you can see what you can see with this watch is it has a fairly traditional case, except it does have this sort of step on the top of it, which steps down to the body of the case. If you look at the profile of the case, you can see that um, it kind of is this sandwich top crystal piece underneath with the case back and then um, and then the uh, lugs themselves. What's quite interesting about this piece though is those lugs stretch pretty far out and looking at other pieces that have the same movement that is used in this, um, a lot of the officer watches during this era or I guess in the 1940s had a very similar case design. So what you can see is the um, sides of the case are in very good condition. You can actually still see if you take a loop, some of the bevels on the edges of the case, which I think is a very attractive part of, of this watch. One of the other things that's quite attractive is the size of this crown. When you put your fingers on this crown, it really is large and it's not something that um, you typically get in a watch that's 33 millimeters, but it makes it very easy to wind, which again sort of alludes to this idea of it being an officer's watch or a watch that um, had sort of a military style to it. Um, so I'm hoping that the video, you can really see the incredible quality of the, the this case. I don't know if it's been polished, but based on the sharpness of the lugs and the fact that I can still see um, quite a few bevels on this piece, I'd say that there's very few signs of polishing on this uh, this watch. 
If you look at the dial of the watch, which you've probably been staring at because I have been staring at it this entire time, you'll see this white cream dial that's in really great condition. If you take a loop to it, it really doesn't look um, like there has been uh, any patina to, or very little patina to the dial. If you look at the hour markers, which you can see are gold applied hour markers at 12, 3, 6, and 9, you actually can see some um, little dirt specks uh, in the um, sort of in the center of the, the round six or between the one and the two, which makes me think that maybe this watch has, slightly, has been cleaned, but I would not say that it's been refinished. I think it was just a watchmaker who wanted to maybe clean off some of the specs that, that, are, that have been seen on the watch. But again, that's sort of my um, assessment of the, of the piece. I think the gold on white looks really great. Signature is really strong. Swiss made, bought it down at six. If you turn over the watch, you have this really great inscription that reads, uh, 1961 D. Tracy, over 40 years with C.S. Milner and, and Co. Limited. And then you have the, the case number. You can see it's a waterproof case back, screw down case back. And the reason why I wanted to bring that this up is because um, this was obviously is pointing to the idea that this was likely a gift for someone who was celebrating 40 years of service with a company called CS Milner and Co Limited. Based on my research, this was an engineering company um, that was located in Deptford, Deptford, South London, in the United Kingdom, which I think speaks to the uh, provenance of this piece and also gives you an idea of where this piece likely was sold to. And I'll give you guys a close-up of the inscription so you can see it. Um, likely means that this watch was sold in the United Kingdom. It was sold to an individual celebrating 40 years of service with their, with their company. What's really amazing is 40, if you go back 40 years from 1961, which is when this watch dates to, you're looking at just after World War I, which is kind of mind-blowing to think about. The individual who wore this wrist or was gifted this, wore this watch or was gifted this watch was um, started with the company just after World War I. And of course, I think it's, you know, it's well known that people don't really work for companies that long anymore. 40 years is very unknown. Uh, or it's very... Um, rare to have someone who works 40 years with a company. One of the things that's also very special about this watch is the movement that is used. So as you can see, it has this set center seconds complication. The movement that is used in this piece is the caliber K478-C manual wind movement. This is from the JLC um, line of calibers 470, which were hand wound movements made by JLC. Um, there are a couple of variations of this piece, but the reason why this is um, really special is this movement is considered to be one of the greatest movements, um, easily one of the greatest movements manufactured by, um, by any watch company based on the construction and finishing of the movement. I really want to get you a close-up of this dial, so bear with me while I battle with the camera here. You know, I told myself I was going to get good with this camera, and I, I thought I was, but we'll have to keep, keep working on it. Um, so as I was saying, it's one of the finest movements that's ever been produced. The 478 caliber was introduced in 1945, so just post um, the, the Second World War, and is... Um, in very close relation to the caliber 479, which was used in the Jäger Le Coultel Mark, Mark 10 or Mark 20, excuse me, Mark 10 pilot watches that were delivered to the British RAF in 1945. The only difference is that the 479 movement had a subsidiary uh, se seconds hand instead of a center seconds hand, which you see in the 478 uh, movement uh, in this piece uh, itself. Um, 
The movement finishing on this art is absolutely incredible and demonstrates again why I think Hugo Le Coulter is one of the um, the uh, the most important um, watch manufacturers um, manufacturers out there. Um, one thing that I haven't done to sort of wrap up this video is I'll give you a shot of it on the wrist because I do think, as I mentioned in the in the beginning, that with the lugs being fairly long uh, and, and pronounced, you actually get a really nice, um, you actually are able to wear a 33 millimeter watch that looks um, a little bit on the larger side. So give me one second while I get the focus here. So as you can see, the watch fits really nicely. Obviously I have a smaller wrist, but fits really nicely on the wrist and um, it's a pleasure to have there and is in really great condition. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this um, GLC. Um, it really is a, a stunning example of what stainless steel watches from this era could be or are like um, and is running on one of the best movements ever produced in, in my humble opinion by a brand that needs no introduction when it comes to fine watchmaking. Hope you enjoyed taking a look at this JLC from 1961. I do think it is one of my favorites out of the lineup that I have um, in front of me right here. That and definitely the, the Longines Reference 700, the case design on this is pretty incredible. So I, I'm gonna guess that maybe this is gonna be the next one, but we could go for something like the, the, the Omega 2279 um, if we, if, if, you know, whatever we're feeling like for the next one. Uh, let me know in the, in the comment section below what you think about this watch. My uh, question for the day is, um, do companies still give uh, watches as gifts for anniversaries of, uh, of, of service? Uh, I don't think they do, but if you do know of some that do it, um, that'd be great. I'm going to guess that it doesn't happen, I'm going to guess that you aren't getting pieces like this this uh, GLC that we looked at because of, based on the, the quality of this, it just isn't something that's done very often. Um, so it was, it's just a nice little piece of history, uh, not mine, but, but uh, for someone it really was a nice piece of history. If you are new to the channel, do all the regular stuff that, we, that uh, are, is associated with YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, share this with a friend who might be interested in watches. Um, really does help me out. With this said, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and until next time.